in this video, I'm going to show you how to make 3D terrain in GDevelop. Let's get right into it. So let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to do is create a new project. So you can go to these three bars here in the menu, go to file, create, and create a new empty project and name it and save it wherever you like. Now, regular GDevelop, when it comes to terrain, it doesn't have the assets and the ability to have 3D terrain, nor does Pandocles extension. But there is an extension called Babylon.js or Babylon GD that can do three, not only 3D terrain, but can do many other 3D features like 3D boxes. But in this case, we're going to be learning how to do 3D terrain because that's a very important for making realistic 3D games. Now, before we go and download this extension, I'm going to drop the creator of this extension's channel inside my description so you can go subscribe to his channel. It's good that you support him and make sure that he has the motivation and support to keep updating this great extension. Now, we're going to go into our web browser and download the extension. So this extension right here is called Babylon GD. So you want to search in Babylon GD and make sure not to misspell it or you definitely won't get the right um, search results and go into Babylon GD by Usta Games. And now he hit download now and go into no thanks just take me to download unless you want to support him. No thanks take me to downloads and I'm going to download the extension. The documentation and the source code are for learning how to use it. But in this case, we're going to go to the extension. And you can download wherever you like. I already saved it on my desktop just so it's easy to find. But once you download it, you want to go back to GDevelop. And now you want to go to these three boxes here on the top left and go into extensions. And import extension is down here. And now if I go to my desktop, that's where I saved it. It should be named BabylonGD.json. And you double click this, wait for it to import. And as you can see, now it's on the side. If I look at my extensions tab, Babylon GD is on the side. And here's the thing. Babylon GD is just a 3D engine that converts the regular 2D gameplay into 3D. Now, in order for us to do terrain, how do we actually do terrain in GeoVault? And we're not going to be going to the engine just yet. We have to take advantage of a feature in 3D game development that's called height mapping. Now, I'm going to show you what these are. But first, before we get into what height mapping is... You need to download a software that can help us make it first. And this software is called paint.net. It's important. Don't type paint.net or it'll take you to this website. It'll take you to this website. That's not the actual website. You want to go to paint.net. Just type in paint.net software. Type in paint.net software and then this will show up. This is what we actually want. And paint.net, once you go to the website, you want to go down. Well, you want to go to get it now free download. Then you want to go to downloadnow.pdn. And then you'll be taken to this page and you can put free download now. And I've already downloaded this, but once you download it, just simply go through the process of making sure you agree to all the terms of service and all of that. And then once you're downloaded, we can open up the software. Now, I'm going to go into my Windows. I'm going to type in paint. And make sure not to put that as paint.net here, not the regular Windows paint. And this is actually an example of a height map. I was just working on one before I start the tutorial. But here's an example of what a height map is. And basically what a height map is, is a way to represent 3D terrain and 3D game development. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to create a new file first. And you want to follow this along as well. Create a new file and make the size. This can be really any size you want, but in this case, we want it to be even. So we're going to put 1,000 by 1,000 pixels and click OK. Now we have this white blank page. And I also want you to add a new layer and then click into that layer too. Now we have a new thing. Now what is height mapping? Height mapping is a way to represent 3D terrain like I said earlier. Now when you're making a height map, you want the ground, the flat parts of the terrain, you want to be black. The high parts of the terrain, the things like mountains, the high parts of the terrain, you want that to be white. And the little bumps, like the little lower bumps, if you want to make something that's kind of high but not just as high as the white ones, you want to use gray. Now, I know this is going to be extremely tedious to make. Like, how could you make a detailed height map um, just by regular painting? You can make it, but it's very tedious. But what's a quick way to make it? Now, I'm going to show you how to do this in paint.net. That's why we download this software, because it's very easy to make them. Now, the first thing you want to do is go to um, select a layer. Of course, we already selected the layer. Now, you want to go to effects, and you want to go to render. And you want to go to clouds. And as you can see, you can already see it like pop up on the canvas. That's kind of how they look. As you can see, we already have a lot of like these white little things. We have a little bit of black. We have a little bit of gray. And basically, this creates a great little mix. This creates a little great mix of gray, white, and black. So basically, we already have like a mountainous look. If 
by default. Now I'm gonna go into the scale. You can set the scale to a thousand. It's good to make the scale big. If you set it small, it'll be really bumpy. So we want we don't want it to be super bumpy. So we're gonna set it as one thousand. And set the roughness as like zero point forty or through like forty five or fifty. It doesn't really matter too much. Now I'm gonna click into OK. Now another thing I want to do is delete. I want to delete um parts of this because I want to have like a middle path, and therefore we're gonna to need to use black. So instead of drawing black, I'm going to show you this later, but you want to click into the eraser. It is over here, and it looks pink and white. Click into the eraser, or you can use the keyboard shortcut E. And you want to set the hardness to zero and set the brush size to 375. The brush size doesn't matter too much, but since we're trying to make a path, we want it to be pretty big. And now you want to click, and as, when I delete this path, you'll be looking at it, and you're like, okay, it's white. It's not actually black, so won't it be a high point? Well, we're going to invert this later so it can look black. But we're using the eraser tool, but when the eraser erases, it naturally looks white. That's why we're using eraser first. And I'm just making this little path here with some mountain stuff on the side. And now that that's done, we want to merge the layers. We want to merge the layer. And the way we do this, we go to the layer. We go to layer. And then you scroll down. And you put merge layer down. It should be the fourth option on the layers tab. Merge layer down. And now you see now they're both the same layer. And now I'm going to do adjustments, go to invert colors. And now you can see we have this. So if just to look at it, this black part, think of this as a terrain, a 3D terrain for a second. This black part is going to be the flat ground, which we don't have too much of. And the white parts are going to be the mountains, the high points. And these gray parts, they're still higher than the ground, but they go up. They go up because they're gray. So think of it like that. Now we're going to save this. We're going to save this right now. So I'm going to go into file and I'm going to put save as. I'm going to put save as. And as you see, I kind of already have these. So I'm going to just save this on my desktop just so it's easy to find. And I'm going to name this um, height map tutorial since I'm making a tutorial. Height map tutorial. And save this wherever you can find it. And then it's going to take you to this. Don't change any of the settings here. Just press OK. Now. Heading back into GDevelop, heading back into GDevelop. In order for us to see our terrain, of course we need a player, we need a camera, we need something so we can see. We need something so we can see. So first, before we even start making our terrain object, we want to make a player first. But before we even make a player, we want to go into our events. Because we have to start up the engine first. So what you want to go to is add a new event, add a condition, other conditions, and go into Babylon GD, and put if babylon engine is ready if babylon engine is ready and then go into actions go to other actions and go to babylon gd start the engine so basically the moment we start the scene you won't be able to see it now but the moment we start the scene babylon js automatically starts of course we can't tell right now but babylon um, dot gd has already started now i'm going to add a new object i'm going to call it camera it doesn't really matter whether you call it camera or player i'm just going to call it camera God, that's literally what it is. I'm going to add a sprite. And it doesn't matter what sprite you add. Normally, of course, you'll add a sprite and it'll take you to Piskel if you create a new one. But my Piskel doesn't work. But all you're going to do is create a 32 by 32 cube. And that's it. So I'm going to go to my sprites. Pictures. I'm going to go to game sprites. Sprites for tutorials. And I'm going to go to this blue blue cube here. And just create a 32 by 32 cube. And before we leave out, we want to go to the behaviors tab and add a new behavior. And when we scroll down, you'll see we have all these new behaviors specifically for Babylon GD. So now what we're going to do is add the camera behavior. And I can see it creates a camera, a first person camera for the player. And make sure these are checked off. Apply gravity, yes. Check collisions, yes, we want to collide with things. Hide, hide on 2D canvas. Remember, it makes sure we can't see it on the regular 2D canvas. And leave all this as default. These are just ASCII codes, key codes. This represents S, this represents D, this represents A, and this represents W. If you want to change these, look up ASCII key codes. That's what you want to do if you want to change these by default. But I'm going to hit apply. And before we start, um, if I drop the terrain and player in the scene right now, we won't be able to see anything. So we also need a light. We need a 3D light. I'm going to add a new sprite. Call this light. 
and we're going to be using a 3D light for this. And add a sprite. I'm going to go into my tutorial. You can luckily like I set once again set this as a 32 by 32 cube using the paint tool and put red cube. Of course, I'm putting red cube for myself. Go into behaviors, add a behavior, and then scroll down and go to light behavior. Then you have a hemispheric light. A hemispheric light basically it covers the whole as you can say hemisphere or you can say in this case the like 3d atmosphere basically it covers the whole place so you're all everywhere you go on the map will be lit up and of course point light i'll get to these on a future tutorial for babylon gd but these are all different lights a spotlight a directional light these are basically self-explanatory but they're not as big as a hemispheric light and the intensity is how bright the light is going to be and i'm going to set the intensity of three the lower of course the darker the higher the lighter and Vector 3 array. This is a vector position. It's something actually I don't quite understand. But all you need to know is you need to change this. Not change this. Don't change this. Because if you change this to something random or some gibberish, it won't work. So just keep this as it is by default. It'll work. Apply. And drag the light onto the scene. And also drag the player onto the scene. Now let's get into finally, finally making our terrain. I'm going to add a new object and call it um well, let me see a sprite is a sprite object and we're gonna of course name it terrain and we're gonna have to do a few more things before we get to actually see this terrain in full full form now add an animation and add a sprite and this sprite should be your height map that you just made it should be your height map so i'm gonna go into desktop and i'm gonna go into height map tutorial this is the picture i made and I can see we'll now have our height map in here. But you'll be wondering if I apply this and drag it to the scene, and then I run the scene, it won't look like anything at all, as you can see. When I put this in the scene, this won't it'll just look like a regular picture. And we don't want that. Now what do we want to do? We want to go to behaviors, add a behavior for the terrain, and scroll down until you see terrain behavior. Scroll down till you see that. Then you have these parameters. You have minimum height, maximum height, and the subdivisions. I'm going to explain all of these. The minimum height is how low you want the minimum height for the train to be. The lowest you need to use is zero. If you put a negative value, it will probably just go into like itself or it maybe even flip upside down. Basically, you don't want to put a negative value here. The minimum height, of course, is zero. The maximum height controls how tall the train is. And mainly, this affects the white parts of our height map like let me apply this think about this white part think about them stretching up if you make the height go up. the flat part will not be stretching up it's just the high part that's the whole benefit of our height map here i'm going to go back into behaviors and the subdivisions these base control the quality of the terrain now when we apply textures which we haven't done yet when we apply textures to the terrain the subdivisions will make it look more high quality the higher it is, also, it could make it very laggy, so don't set it to something extremely high, like 1,000. For my testing, 50 through 100 have been fine. But if you want to look more detail, you can put some in. But uh, 50 is fine for me, and I'm going to hit apply once again. But of course, we can't, ha we can't do anything yet. So I'm going to um, uh, go back into the terrain. Now, when we're dealing with the terrain in Babylon GD, the, we have to set animations for the height map. We have to set an animation for something called a mix map, which I'm going to explain a little bit later. We have to set an animation for ground, middle, high, ground, N, middle, N, and high, N. I know you know what none of those mean, so let me just show you. So height map. We have to name these animations a certain value because this is how the engine knows how to like apply certain animations to what part of the terrain. We have to name it exactly like this with caps and everything. If we don't name it exactly like this, it will not work. So make sure you get this right. The first animation should be called height map, not add a sprite. Then you want to add another animation. This next animation should be called mix map, all caps. Make sure all of these are all caps. The third animation should be called ground. The fourth animation should be called middle. The fifth animation should be called, should be called, let me see, it should be called high. Yeah, that's the word high. And the next animation should be called ground n. Ground underscore n. 
and this next animation should be called middle underscore m. And last but not least, this next animation should be called high underscore m. And what we have to do here is put textures in each of these parts. We gotta put textures in each of these parts. Now, I'm going to go hit apply. And I'm gonna actually drag this into the scene. And here thing, we need to do one more thing before we um, run the scene. Put the player, click into the camera, slash player, and go to Z order and put 200. Now, if you don't know already, in terms of 3D G develop, when we change the Z order, that changes the height of whatever thing we're applying it to. It changes the height of the object. So by us putting the Z starting Z order as 200, we make sure it starts off high. Now I'm gonna zoom out and go stretch this terrain out. Stretch it out. And let's run the scene. We might not see anything because we haven't applied any animations, but we may see something. As you can see, we don't see anything at all because I haven't applied some type of sprite to all of these. Now, what we need to do is add some... I'm going to add a placeholder here. I'm going to add a placeholder. Um, and it's going to be the same thing. Add, you can add your height map as a placeholder. But we have to add textures. We have to add a ground texture, what we want that to look like, a middle texture, and then a high texture. So I'm going to show you all of these. So we're going to go back into our browser, and we're going to go into Open Game Art. You can get any sprites you want, but Open Game Art is pretty good for just downloading textures. I'm going to put dirt, and I'm going to put this dirt right here. I'm going to download this dirt object. And there's actually a lot of dirt in this texture pack, but I'm going to just download this specific dirt. This specific dirt right here, dirt2.png. And I'm going to also save everything on desktop in this tutorial, just so it's easy to find. Now you want to search up snow texture, because we're going to use all these textures, because we have to map them with a mix map, which I'm going to explain later. Now I'll get snow texture. And download the snow texture. Save it to the desktop. And last but not least, I'm going to get a stone texture. And it's just taking a little bit load. I'm going to get the stone texture right here. And download this as well. And here we have it. We have these three textures. Now we're going to go back to GDevelop. And for ground, we want our ground texture. I'm going to put stone. It doesn't matter which one you put, but we'll see you later. But I'm going to put stone as the ground texture. I'm going to put for middle texture, I'm going to put dirt. And for the high texture, I'm going to put... For the high texture, I'm going to put... Um, let me see. Snow. I'm going to put snow for that. Now, when it comes to ground end, middle end, and high end, these basically control how your textures mix with one another. And actually, it's best to put this as like an invisible color if you don't want your textures to mix. Because for my testing, when you try to put mixing textures, it doesn't really look that well. But since we don't have a clear sprite in this case, because this doesn't count as clear, this counts as empty, I'm going to put dirt. For my testing, dirt doesn't look too bad when we try to mix it with other sprites. So I'm just going to put the dirt as a placeholder for ground end, high end, and middle end. So I'm going to go into app sprite and put dirt for all of these. And now when I click go back into it, we still may not see any texture or any terrain. Okay, I found out what the problem was. The problem was, in order for us to see our terrain, we have to use a mix map. And I put one here as a test. But in order for you to make your own mix map, and I'm going to explain what these are. Matter of fact, let me just go straight. Let's go straight back into paint.net. And I'm going to explain to you what a mix map is. So let's go into paint.net. So now I'm in paint.net. And I'm going to get rid of this um, height map here. That's not the one we want. Don't save. But there's a height map we have. And let me make sure this matches the one. Yeah, this matches. So this height map that we have here. We have colors that have to mix in. As you see, this sprite. I'm going to spray the sprites. We're going to mix in red. We're going to paint this height map with red, green, and blue. I'm going to explain how this maps the textures. Now, for... For the ground, for the ground, think of it like this, R, G, B. Red 
it matches with hot. So if I paint this height map here, uh, I paint it, the whole thing red, the whole thing will look like the snow. If I paint the whole thing green, the whole thing will look like the dirt. And if I paint the whole thing blue, the whole thing will look like this stone. So in this case, RGB, R, the red, it represents high, the green represents middle, and the blue represents ground. So I'm going to put a mixture right here. And not my OBS. I'm going to go into blue. I'm going to click into blue. And it doesn't have to be exact blue because GDevault will know how close it is to the real color. Go into a paint tool. Go into this paintbrush. And now we can paint it. We can paint it. So I'm going to paint this middle. We want this to be the ground. I'm going to put the hardness as 100% so the whole thing can be fully blue. I'm going to paint this ground part blue. I'm going to paint all this ground part blue. This means this will look like stone. Since I want the snow, I'm going to change my brush size to be a little bit smaller than this. Could go to 300. Since I want the snow to be up in the mountains, I'm going to set this as red. I'm going to set this as red right here on the sides. And the rest of it, I want to be dirt. So I'm going to set it as green. So I'm going to click it to green down here on my color, on my color wheel. And I'm going to paint the rest of this green. I'm kind of covering it up. I should use a smaller um, brush size. Let me use a smaller brush size. And I'm painting the rest of this green. And I'm going to put some more red over here. So, of course, this will look like stone. This will look like dirt. This will look like snow. And it's important that we color the whole thing. We don't want there to be any gaps. Now, I'm going to go to File, Save As. And we want to call this Mix Map. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call this Mitz Map Tutorial. Save this where you can remember it. And click OK. And now we're going to go back into GDevault. And this is what the Mix Map is. That maps on the textures to the height map. Now, I'm going to go into Add Sprites. And I'm going to click into, or I'm going to go to my desktop. I've already made some Mix Maps before. And go into Mix Map. Go into the Mix Map you just made. And now drag it. Make sure it's the first part of the animation. Matter of fact, we can delete this. But basically, it has to be the first part of the animation or else it'll look like this. But in case we put the order, we drag it back to the left and it'll play first. That'll be the first animation that plays. Basically, it'll look like that. So apply and preview. And as you can see, if I go into my game, we have a mixture of all of these textures. We have a mixture of all of these textures. We have this dirt over here. We have the stone on the ground. If I even walk up, because these are hills, and depending on how steep it is, you can walk up. If I go up all the way higher, I have the snow up here on the mountains. And that's basically how you make terrain in Jeeval. I know you might see this, and you're like, this terrain is not that big. How about if I want to make a really big landscape? Well, it's very simple. If you want to make a very big landscape, if you want to make a very big landscape, all you have to do is stretch this out because you want it to be really big. Think about real life. Think about real life. You want the train to be really big because this player covers a lot of space. So we want this to be really, really big, actually. And then you can also you can stretch it out in this direction because if what you see is what you get. If you have it long, the train will be long. And if you have it tall, it will be tall. And also, I'm going to go double-click to my terrain, go into behaviors, and go into max height. And I'm going to put, like, 15. Set the subdivision slightly lower because um, it's a little bit laggier since I'm recording it. But normally, it's not actually laggy in the engine. And now, if I run it, you'll see we have much bigger terrain. We have much bigger terrain. And, of course, the bigger your terrain is, the more you want to increase the height, the more you want to increase the height of the terrain itself. I'm walking over here, and you can see the dirt in the distance. But that is how you make terrain in GDevault. And I hope you enjoyed this video if you got something from it. In my next tutorial, I'm going to be doing a full tutorial on how to use Babylon GD, which is this extension, because there's much more in this 3D extension. But once again, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content, and especially for more 3D GDevelop content. And I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you once again for watching, and once again, I'll see you.